Hello and welcome to the Alpha Demo and Q&A webcast. I'm Dave McCormick, VP of Product Management here at Alpha Software, and I'm pleased to be joined today by our presenter, Sarah Mitchell, Director of Customer Success. Today, Sarah is going to be going over custom web themes. So this is a session I know there's a lot of interest in, and we're here, of course, to answer your questions. You could type those questions into the questions box of the GoToWebinar control panel. You could also send them to guides, G-U-I-D-E-S, at alphasoftware.com. So let's get started. I, I like your uh, your starting screen there. It reminds me of canoeing in Maine or whatever in the summer. What's the first image I found when I Googled canoe? So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Dave. <laughs> also, welcome back. You've been out of office for a couple of weeks. I've been I out of been. office. Yeah, a I know. I missed you guys. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we're back. Um, back to our usual uh, monkey business here. Um, so yeah, welcome back everyone. I hope uh, you enjoyed Dion's presentation last week. Um, I still haven't had an opportunity to watch it yet, but I heard really good things about it. So I'm looking forward to catching that. Uh, as always, uh, I'd like to do a little bit of housekeeping, you know, remind you of things that are coming up. So, you know, today we're doing web themes, but next week we're gonna talk about debugging, XBasic specifically, and then custom web themes part two, following that, on the 17th, Dion's going to present GraphQL. Uh, it's going to be covering some of the new stuff uh, that was in the most recent release. And then the 24th is to be determined. It will either be Web Themes Part 3 or uh, something else. It depends on how much I can uh, get through on the 10th, uh, which is going to actually be like a live demo of putting something together. Um, whereas today, we're going to go over a lot of the uh, utility of how things work, you know, where to find things, what you need to do, um, that kind of thing. And then also as a reminder, uh, DevCon 2022 is coming up October 18th to 22nd. Uh, tickets on sale now. Get your tickets if you haven't gotten them yet. I uh, hope you can join us. This year we're going to be doing data uh, as the theme, so that's going to be uh, fun. Uh, but the real reason why you guys are all here uh, is building custom web themes, uh, joining us today. And if you're watching us on YouTube, like and subscribe. Um, thank you for, for watching this. Uh, but we're going to talk about this. And I want to just cover a little bit of terminology before we get started so that you're not utterly confused if you've never um, worked with oh, styling a, a web application before. Uh, so this terminology I've got up here, it's just four terms. I wanted to make sure you guys all understand. Uh, style, CSS, SAS, and web theme. So style, whenever we say style, oh, we're talking about the visual design elements in your app, the color, the layout, the fonts, the uh, borders, you know, that kind of stuff, the, how, it, how it looks. Um, as far as styling your app, uh, there are two ways you can do that. You can use CSS, which is cascading style sheets. Uh, this is the language used to define styles and it's the native one to all web browsers. But this other one, SAS, which is syntactically awesome style sheets, is an extension for CSS that adds really, really cool features like functions, nesting, variables, uh, mix-ins, the list goes on. Um, it's really, really powerful and it makes building and maintaining a theme, uh, which we will learn today is going to be quite a bit of work on your part <laughs> to get it all together if you're starting from scratch. Uh, but it, it offers some features and functionality that just really make it so much easier to work with CSS, the language of web browsers for defining the look of your application. And then finally, this fourth term web theme is just what we call an alpha anywhere style. So in a traditional web page, uh, the style is usually included in this as a CSS file. Uh, that defines all the classes and 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 visuals for elements and stuff. Uh, and Alpha Anywhere, we call it a web theme because it's more than that. It it's your CSS and your SAS, but it's also the images, the fonts, and there's also JavaScript involved uh, to map uh, what you um, to map your classes and stuff to the actual elements of an application. So your controls, your components. Um, even some of the more generic stuff, like the general page that encases everything. So uh, these are terms that we'll use. Um, there was another one that we used to talk about as well, but it's fallen out of out of vogue. Uh, SAS theme. It was just another 
alternative on web theme, but we, we prefer to use the word web theme now uh, when we're referring to styles that you can use to customize your app's look. So with respect to how do you customize your app's look and feel, how do you customize its style, your apps can be customized enough anywhere uh, using CSS and SAS, and there's a lot of different ways you can do this. So if you were here, if you've seen it either on YouTube or you joined us several months ago, we talked about application branding and like where all the places are in the product where you can go in there and change things. And so every control usually has like an inline style property or a class property or, um, you know, components have uh, CSS slash style settings that you can uh, add your own class names to or, you know, add rules to override existing classes in the web theme. But that those places to change things, they're, they're all over the place. And in general, we recommend that you start small. So edit things locally, as local as you can get. Start with an inline style on, on like a text box until you figure out where you want it to look and then migrate that up into a class. And then eventually, you know, into the, the web theme itself, if that's what you want, or, you know, in a, a style tweak or not a style tweak, sorry, a sub theme, which is a variation um, on the, on how on a controls theme uh, styling in a web theme, which we'll we'll talk about later. Uh, but within Alphanewer, we provide quite a few builders to work with that. You know, CSS and and image pickers or color pickers. Uh, but today, what we really want to talk about is the web theme builder. So building a custom web theme from scratch. Um, what is the web theme builder? How do you use it? Um, just your observation, I know a lot of people aren't really familiar with it, and it can be a bit daunting because it doesn't it doesn't have that traditional uh, drag and drop feel uh, that the rest of Alpha Anywhere may have. And it's really because it's it's predominantly for you know editing CSS, previewing things and and mapping those classes into uh, the structure of your application. So the Web Theme Builder is Alpha Anywhere's tool for editing a web theme. And a web theme at a sort of more higher level within Alpha, or maybe a slightly lower level in Alpha Anywhere than the idea of it just being CSS and, and JavaScript, is it's, it's a collection of parts definitions. And parts in Alpha Anywhere web themes correspond to controls and components. And every part has a bunch of properties you can set, uh, as well as some support having display variants, which we call sub-themes. So with regard to the parts that you have access to in a web theme, there's really like three categories, components, controls, and then general settings. And general settings are in general, and this is settings that can apply to the entire theme. Pardon me. Oh, excuse me. Uh, there, it's stuff like defining the icon set, which will be all the icons that you have access to when you're setting icons in other places. Uh, just general settings for like what's the page uh, classes, uh, you know, default label um, classes that are applied to labels just throughout uh, throughout the application. But then below, below that, you have grid UX and tabbed UI, uh, which are components. So these three component types have their own part in the web theme. And then everything else beyond that is controls. And controls are going to be either in the grid or the UX or both. Uh, the naming of these parts may not uh, match a control's name. So an example of that would be for text box controls. They are called a text box control, but in the parts section, it's called edit. It's an edit control, and it's because edit is used not only for a text box, but it's used for a text area, um, as well as, I believe, a drop down. So, in in some cases, so that um, that part, that edit part, applies to a few controls you can use to edit text. So, just kind of something to think about. And I should go grab the link for. I'll grab the link real quick here um, for you here. In documentation, we do have a, a page on the web theme builder, and it's got all the parts listed out. And I'm going to put that in the chat here so you can go look at that. 
that section, but all, all the parts are listed out and we try our best to describe, you know, what does this apply to? So you're gonna, if you look through that, you're gonna get a hint about uh, what some of those those names may, may be. So everything else in there is controls. If you've, if you plan to build a custom theme from scratch, which we'll look at what you get if you start from scratch today, um, only implement the parts that you're going to use in your app. So if you're going to build a web theme and you're never going to use a grid component and you're never going to use a tabbed UI component, you don't need to implement those parts. You can skip them. They're not necessary because you don't need them. So that's just something to kind of like keep the scope small because there is a lot uh, that you can configure in a web theme in that builder. With regards to individual part settings, uh, depending on the part you're working with, uh, when, uh, window, <laughs> window, a menu, tabs, a button, uh, they're going to have settings, and those settings are going to be a variety of different things that you can you can set. So predominantly, you're going to see a lot of classes and a lot of icons, uh, but occasionally you might see something to set like a size, a position, or a direction. So left to right, right to left. Uh, I did find one instance where you can set an animation duration on something. So it's a it's a control that has an animation in it and that animation is specified in the web theme itself, not, not within the control. Uh, as well as a few places where you can specify default HTML that's injected into the control when it's rendered. And those last two are, are few. There's, there's not a lot of them and they don't generally get used in the alpha themes themselves. So uh, if you come across it, it's gonna be something that may not have uh, an example out there, but those settings are in there in the cases that it made sense. As far as the uh, web theme builder itself, this is a screenshot of the web theme builder, the code tab, which is where you go and define parts uh, where you implement it. And it's broken up into a, a few sections. We have a map over here. Map is where you find all the parts. Uh, on the left hand side, there's a preview of the selected part and its sub theme. Every part has base as the a uh, required one. It's the default one used in the system. If you want to make variations on it, you can add them and then you'll have to manually assign them in your application. But you have the preview here and then across the bottom you've got this text area where you can edit the CSS and SAS as well as you know insert variables or um, you know add uh, expose variables uh, or SAS. Uh, SAS settings, SAS variables, if you have them. As far as implementing the theme is concerned, it it is defined with classes in CSS or SAS. And it, I keep saying SAS because I do recommend that you start with SAS or at least learn enough of it to uh, leverage it because uh, it's going to make your life quite easy uh, maintaining and, and updating things. Uh, but you start with defining that CSS that you want to um, use to dictate how things look. You then assign it into parts. And then once you've gotten to that point, you need to refine. So you start with just the stuff you need. So maybe you start with a UX component, um, go in there, set up some of the UX component part settings, and then start working on some of your controls, like your button or your, your text boxes. Uh, Get that set up and then go look at it and see how they behave with each other because the UX component part is going to have some settings that may um, uh, have a side effect on the controls that you may not know about uh, because it's it's not always clear when you assign like a four pixel value to a, a uh, size property if that's going to be something that's like always applied or just at like the top level. So. You'll definitely want to have something built that you can work with uh, to kind of refine that interaction between the, the parts and uh, the, the small control parts and the, the component parts. Uh, the CSS builder, or no, sorry, the web theme builder does have a, um, a wrapper property you can use to emulate something being inside of like uh, a, I'm sorry, I'm blanking on the term. Panel header or footer. So the alpha theme has panel headers and footers. And if you put a, a text a text box or a button inside a panel or header or footer, it looks different. 
than if it's just in the panel. So if it's just in the panel itself, it looks like a button, but if it's up in that, that header, it's gonna have like an underline. It looks a little bit more like a link. Uh, the Web Theme Builder has a way to sort of visualize that when you're working with a specific part uh, using this wrapper, and we'll we'll look at that today. Uh, with regard to SAS, if there's one thing that you learn how to do with SAS, it's use variables. They are a way to define like a color or a font or sizes or like a whole rule, like a border rule that you can then reference everywhere throughout your theme. And if you get in there and discover like, oh no, I, I really do not want all of these controls to be blue. I need them to be kind of like a, a navy color or even green. You just have to update the one variable. You don't have to go in there and find every single instance of that CSS color value that you used. So it's it's very useful. It can save you a ton of time. Um, the other benefit is that you can expose them to the adjust view, uh, which we'll look at next, uh, for easy editing. But before that, just as you know, a visual, the thing on the left-hand side of the screen here is uh, a couple of SAS variables. So there's one called fonts that's defined as the value times new Roman comma serif. I have one called background, which is the color FFF, which is white. One called font size, 16 pixels. And then gray border, two pixel solid uh, EEE. -E. And on the right are a few CSS rules where these have been used. So this one up here, the asterisk is like a, a global, a global selector and it's setting the font size to font size of that variable. But if you look at the next rule, there's something called header, and it uses the font family fonts, uh, but the font size now is a calculation. It's 1.5 times the font size um, variable here. So 16, 1.5 is gonna be 16 plus half of that. So is it 24? Uh, it should result to 24 pixels. So it's gonna be bigger. But if I come in here and be like, you know, 16 was, was too big, I wanna make it smaller, I can, adjust that down without having to go in here and then you know mess with the header because I still want that kind of uh, relationship of it being one and a half times larger uh, than the the font used throughout the, the system. And then also this uh, border bottom is gray border, two pixel solid EE. -E. Um, I could assign this to border top or border, uh, making all, all four sides that same, same uh, width, color, and uh, style, but this is just an example of how those variables can be used. And you know, if I go in here and I put a bunch of borders everywhere, and I decide I don't like the color, I can change it. If I don't like the style, I can change it. If I just decide I do not want the border anymore, I could just set gray border to none, and then remove it completely. So this is an example how you can use them. And within the web theme itself, we have a syntax for adding a, a comment after a, a variable to expose it on the adjust tab and in the um, adjust style colors and fonts, I think it's the property name uh, in the UX and the grid. And uh, this syntax is, is great for like taking those variables and then putting them in an interface that gives you like a, a really easy like color picker or um, you know size selector. And there's, uh, it, ha it has this format, it's specific to Elf Anywhere, it's two forward slashes, a space, an asterisk, a, a, colon, and then four values separated by uh, a pipe character. So the first one is the category, which is the, the category of the variable, which is how they're broken up in the, uh, the variable viewer. The label, which is shown in the, the, view in the viewer, it doesn't have to match the SAS variable name in, in the code. The type, which can be uh, none, color, or size. So if it's none, it's just gonna be a text area. If it's color, we give you the option to use the CSS color picker to pick a color to set it. And if it's size, we give you a little, little size uh, pop-up where you can enter a value and then pick the size type, like pixels, point, uh, EM. Uh, so those are the three types. And then help is help text shown in the UI when you select that. So this is an example of two SAS variables that have been uh, given uh, that definition so they can be edited outside of that code tab. And here they are right here. So here's variables on the adjust tab. We have colors and we have sizes. Colors comes from this first value. Oops. Here, background is the name of this uh, property. The FFF is read from the value and it's shown here. 
uh, I told it it's a color, so if I were to edit this, I will get the color picker. And then finally, the help text background color. It's not shown on the adjust tab on the variable side, but um, this help is shown in the edit, stas, uh, edit style SAS variables uh, dialog in the UX and the grid builder. So this one has background selected, and there's our, our background color description. This can be as long as you need it to be. But yeah, these two options will give me the appropriate picker that it uh, desired uh, for either editing a color or a size. Uh, something I did want to give you, Gary, just sort of highlight in today's presentation a bit is web fonts. Uh, on occasion, people ask about this, and I think web fonts are a great way to uh, incorporate your brand into your app, you know, break out of whatever our system defaults are in there. And, uh, you know, really expand your options behind, beyond the, the web safe fonts, which is the way it used to be done. Web safe fonts are fonts that have on everybody's computer, uh, Windows, Mac, Linux, uh, I guess iOS and Android now. Um, they're called web safe because if you pick that font like an Arial font, uh, almost every single computer in the world has it installed. So you don't need to worry about whether or not it's there. Uh, but with um, fonts that aren't safe, uh, I, think, I forget, is it Helvetica is like a, is a Mac font, but it's not on Windows. Um, or used to be that way. Uh, if you wanted to use that on your website, um, only the people who had it installed would see that and then everyone else would get something else. Uh, with web fonts, you can actually include that font that you want to use in your project and you can either you know, download it uh, at runtime when it's launched in the, the client machine from some third party host or you know, include it as part of your project files so it's it's published up on your server and always available. And the nice thing is that they download it with your app so you know that people are gonna have it. And today, I don't think there's such a thing as uh, a browser out there that doesn't support web fonts. Um, when they first came out, it was sort of like a hit and miss kind of thing. But now they're pretty universally supported and you can get them all over the place. Google Fonts comes up all the time, big, huge, massive repository of, of fonts and they host them for you so you don't even have to download anything other than you know copy the, the import CSS command after their website that you need to use that font um, as well as you know know how to reference it in your CSS. But then you've got services like Adobe Fonts where you can go and, and buy fonts. Uh, someone has built really nice ones. You could make your own fonts. Um, you know, whatever brand uh, that your your brand dictates, if it's got a web font out there, uh, you can use it and include it. And that just really sets you as, apart from, you know, everyone else out there because you look different. And these are just examples. Uh, just a, mention this we don't endorse google fonts or adobe fonts or like i i like using font squirrel or or um a few others uh but there's so many different places you can go get them um if you have a font resource you use and you want to share it with the group today go ahead and put it in the chat oh, we'll, we'll definitely get that information to people but you know they're everywhere and there's so many web fonts to choose from today and it's wonderful as far as including the web font um there's a couple ways you can do it uh if it's being hosted for you by somebody else, you can use this at import and then you give it a URL where it lives. This is just an example URL. This is not a real font file. This doesn't exist. Example.com is a fake website. Um, so you'll have to check with the hosting service for what that URL syntax is. But basically you just add this rule to your web theme. You've got the font, you're ready to go. If it's something that you've included in the web project, um, in your uh, in your application, it's going to be the URL is going to be a relative URL to wherever either the CSS file that defines this app font face rule is. Uh, alternatively, you can just have this font face rule right in your web theme, um, but that's going to be relative to wherever the web theme files are stored. So I'm going to make a note to show that to you real quick. I'm realizing I did not make a note to show you guys that. But basically, it's it's pretty similar. Um, the nice thing about it being included in your project is uh, if the font can't be found, 
it's it's something that's within your control, right? You didn't reference the right URL on your site. If it can't be found on a third-party hosted website, it's possible they may have taken it down. That's the risk you run by letting someone else host something for you. But at the same time, I feel like Google Fonts is going to be around for a while. So it's pretty potentially uh, low risk at this point. As far as referencing the web font, um, it's going to be whatever got defined here on this font face property, font family, my web font. That text right there is the name of the font and it's how you need to reference it in all of your CSS and SAS rules. So here we've got, um, you know, dollar sign fonts. This is a variable. There's my web font. And then I have Arial and Sans Serif. Uh, this is just like an example of a font stack. It is recommended that if you are going to do something like a font family that you always include a generic font classification at the end. And the reason for doing this is because if something goes wrong and you know your web font doesn't exist, times doesn't exist on the system for some reason, if you at least know that it was like a serif font or a sans serif or monospace, you can put that in there and say, hey browser, this needs to be a sans serif or a serif font. And the browser will, will um, or the, the device will use whatever the default font is on the system for that. <clears throat> and there's more than these three that I've listed up here. It's just a whole bunch. You can you can find them on like MDN or uh, a set other site where you can go and learn about CSS. It's escaping my mind. MDN, Microsoft Developer. Or, sorry, <laughs> Microsoft Mozilla Developer Network. They have a great, um, great resource on CSS, and you're going to just look for the font family and, and whatever is allowed in there. They they do list all the the generic font classifications you can include. So that's a lot of different things, and so now we're going to do the big scary part. We go on an adventure, and we're going to take a look at a blank web theme. We're going to look at the map. We're going to add variables. We're going to look at the tools that are there, and we're not gonna get very far down the road of actually implementing something because it's a lot of time involved, but it's really important that you understand the tools that you need to use to build this before you, you start diving in and building things. So we're gonna go take a look at Alpha Anywhere. Here we go. And I have Scratch open, which is a theme I started uh, for a few screenshot reasons today, but let's go in here. Let's go here. I'll go file, new style. Let's go to blank theme. And we're going to create it in the local location, which is going to be local to this uh, project. There is an option to store web themes globally, and it's going to be global to the workspace. Uh, local saved in the project, global saved in the workspace. We're just to stick with local for now because everything's easy to find and create that. And this is what you get if you start with a blank theme. You get you get literally nothing. Uh, if you go over to adjust, it's going to show you general because every web theme has to have a general part. All the rest are optional. And general just defines a few things, the heading, some text information, group labels, and default system icons. If there's no variables. If we look over here at the code tabs, there's no variables because nothing has been defined yet. Uh, but in terms of parts, those are all found over here on the map. And if, if you're the first time you open this, nothing is selected. It's going to tell you, you know, you got to select something from the parts. So you, this part right here is the list of all the parts that are available to you. And if they don't exist yet, they will be grayed out and there'll be some text on the side that says click to add. And when you click on one of those, it adds it to your web theme for you. Uh, general is the one that everyone has and only um, only like full web themes. And I can't think of a better way to describe this, but only what full web themes have a general part. If you use an inherited theme, uh, like alpha gray is a good example. That's an inherited theme. It has some overrides for the alpha theme, like colors and possibly fonts um, that override the, the all those settings that exist in alpha, but it, it doesn't have a general because the general exists in alpha. And general can't be um, sub-themed. It's just, a, just general settings for the entire thing. And in here, you're going to have some basic stuff like the page class name, which is assigned to A5W pages. 
So if you embed a UX component A5W page before displaying it, that's an action JavaScript available to you. Uh, that, that page that gets generated uses this class name, uh, this heading and link as well. Links being a, a URL link. So the A tag uh, headings, I believe are the, the H tags. Text is just your basic text. Uh, here, you know, class name and then a label in the text has a class name as well. And these are all things that you need to define and assign. And then down here at the bottom, we have some icons, which if you go in here and you you don't define an icon, you can um, you can pick from the system icons that exist. And these are gonna be the alpha icons that are installed in alpha anywhere. But you don't have to use those ones. You can do something. Uh, you can do something called defining an icon set, and the icon set is going to be either a collection of images or like CSS fonts or SVG icons that are stored in the theme file that you can then reference throughout uh, this builder when you're putting it together, as well as in your applications. So there's three types. We're going to look at SVG because this one's the easiest one. Uh, to work with and I'm gonna cheat in that um, we're gonna come over here and before we do this let's hit cancel here and go back over to web project control panel and open up the folder that contains our web project and then we'll go inside CSS because this is where all of the local themes are stored and we're gonna find blank theme and this is our blank theme these are the files that are generated uh, that are required uh, to implement the theme the SAS is the one that you edit in the code tab. The JSON defines the mapping between the parts and uh, uh, how you want them customized if the class names and stuff, your settings are in are in, are in in that. Uh, but in terms of icons, I'm gonna do over here, I'm gonna come over to alpha copy and we're gonna control C that and come back over here and go into blank and then paste it. Uh, these are all the SVG icons in the alpha theme. And I'm grabbing these uh, just, just for demonstration. But in this folder icons, there's a whole bunch of SVG files. And these are the ones I want to use in my theme. And you can just like wholesale include every single one, even if you're not going to use all of them so that you can make them available throughout the application in like the SVG icon uh, picker when you're adding an image to a button or adding an image There's really anywhere in your component. And if we come back over to blank theme, this icon set, and you can only have one, uh, but we come over to SVG, uh, we have to define the pattern, and the pattern is um, the uh, the search pattern for the icons in the in the folder. Uh, so they were placed inside um, icons here. I'm going to put this off screen so I can see it. But that that pattern is basically icons slash Asterisk is a wild card. Uh, anything that ends in SVG basically here. And then you can also include a prefix. Recommend you do include a prefix because this will help you distinguish between um, icons that are part of your theme versus icons you've added uh, you know, in the UX through the SVG, is it include SVG icon files or something like that. Um, we'll just use a blank theme here. And then I'll put a dash because that's what alpha does. And then these last two things, what's the default class name assigned to an SVG icon? And what's the disabled, the, the default disabled class name assigned to an SVG icon when, when it's added? Uh, alpha uses icon and icon disabled. I'm going to use icon and icon disabled because that makes a lot of sense to me. And then that's it um, for setting this up. Once we click OK here, we can then access those icons in these these other settings. Once we give it a minute to load, but I am going to save this. So if we click on this drop down, we go to SVG icon and select, and give it a minute. This now says style icons, SVG icons at the top. And if we hover over here, you can barely read it because the font's small, but it does say blank theme hyphen academic cap. So these are being loaded from this folder. Uh, and these SVG icons can be whatever you want. Um, they are one file per icon. 
So just keep that in mind. But now I have access to all of these. And if you look up here, class icon, icon disabled, this, that's inserting those class names from that general definition when we set up the icon set for the icon and, and the disabled icon class names, the default ones used. So, you know, we can come in here, we can look for uh, expand, click, click OK, maybe collapse. I don't remember uh, what it's called. So we had the two arrows pointing out. Let's see if we can find two arrows pointing in. Or maybe just go back to expand. I can expand. I cannot remember. Um, what we named it in that file well if you scroll to the top um again you'll see uh -huh. it in the bottom you'll see it at the bottom row just move your cursor down that oh column. there it is thank you yeah. i everybody's looking somewhere different <laughs> <laughs> honestly having somebody sit like looking at something that you did or just like looking at your screen or you're trying to do something can like just vastly improve your ability to get something done <laughs> So yeah, so we have, you know, expand and collapse. Notice is the icons are now appearing over here in the preview. And I'm not gonna finish setting these all up because there are um, hundreds of places you can set these icons, which is why I mentioned it's, it's quite a bit of work to get it all set up. So it, if you only define what you need, you will save yourself some work in, you know, setting properties that are never gonna get touched. Uh, but with that, you know, we've got a few icons that we can use. So now we can do something like um, go back up here and say like maybe we want to start defining buttons and I pick on button because it's like one of the few controls that has something you can see you know out of the box that the button has a default look in the browser and it's pretty easy to configure because you're just uh, you know setting borders backgrounds font sizes paddings and margins by and large sometimes a radius um, maybe if you get crazy you go in there and you know really make it look like a, like a plastic or something like that but it's also one of the the more simpler ones to define but here's here's button it says base this is one that has a sub theme uh, if you click on this there is only base if you look at the alpha themes a whole bunch of different options in there for you uh, if you're starting with a blank web theme there's nothing that's it that's all you've got you you're starting from scratch so with regards to this guy um, you know, defining your base, you have four things you can specify here, a class name, a class name that's applied when uh, the button is being hovered. So when the mouse is hovering over it, there is no hover in a touch interface. Um, uh, a class applied when it's pressed. So when you click down on the control, which th we're seeing the, the default behavior of the browser here when I click. And then also disabled, which this is, this is the browser default. So uh, here, uh, setting this stuff up, it's going to be purely uh, classes. So you know, very quickly, we can do something like a button class and say that it's um, we'll give it an orange background. Uh, we'll give it a font size of 22 pixels and uh, a padding of 10 pixels. I'm just making this up. Um, so this here is a, a CSS class dot button defines a CSS class. Uh, now that I've created that, I've clicked this drop down button. It's right there. If you mouse over it, it's going to show you what you get. Once you apply it, the preview updates to show you how that's going to affect things. And then if we're done here, we just click the close in the upper right hand corner. So that's button. For the rest of this stuff, the hover, press, and disabled, I would need to find three other classes uh, to handle that. Um, but that is, you know, basically where you start and how you implement some of this stuff. Now, I'd mentioned SAS variables and using them. So there's not just a button in this, um, in the parts. There's also a button drop down, the 
uh, edit controls have buttons, as do windows, uh, menu bars, you know, some of these other things can have buttons. So with respect to like, you know, specifying things, I may want my, my button controls specifically to have, you know, really large padding and large font. But in those other places, I may want it to look different. So it's not, it's not appropriate to just assign button to all of those locations. I may want to break it out, but I may want to make sure that they all have the same color. So what I'd really want to do is take this background color and pull it out into a variable. And the easiest way to add a variable is by clicking this add variable button variable button and here is where you can make a decision as to whether or not you want to expose it at the top level so we're going to give it a name we're just going to call it orange because it's a color the um i'm going to call it uh i'm going to give it the value orange because that's the css color value like let's go orange color oops color really drive that home and just to to demonstrate this i'm going to expose this as a SAS variable that can be edited on the adjust tab as well as in within the, the UX builder. I'm gonna put it in a group called colors. I'm gonna tell it, uh, I'm gonna give it a title of orange, capital orange. I'm gonna say this is a type of color. And then the help description, I'm gonna say uh, color used for orange buttons. And as I'm filling this out, I'm starting to think to myself, you know, maybe I, maybe I shouldn't call this orange color if I want to change it um, later. So uh, maybe I'm going to change this to, to button color, give it an orange, and then instead of call this button color, I just call it color use for buttons. So click OK. I can now reference button color here for background. Uh, if you do not remember what the variable name is, you can use insert variable and it's going to add it for you like this using the correct syntax. This is um, this error message that's popping up. I can't remember if it is in the current release or is in the current nightly, but this was added uh, to help you guys figure out where you've gone wrong uh, when you're implementing SAS because uh, in build 8099 and older for sure, if you made a mistake, uh, this preview window would just render as nothing. Um, and it was very confusing to try to figure out why. Uh, so as you're working with this, keep an eye out for that pop-up uh, pop window. But again, uh, variables, button color. Having added this here, I can go over here to adjust and adjust is gonna show me everything I've defined on code. So all the parts that have a definition in the map, which are gonna be anything that that's, has a black, um, is color, uh, has a black color, and it doesn't have the, the click to add text on the side here. All of those are gonna show up over here. It's gonna tell you um, if it has a sub theme, which sub theme is being shown. This just has a button base. But if you look over here on the right hand side, you can see now we see color, button color, click here. There's the help text. Uh, there was no help text in my screenshot earlier uh, for this. I think it was because I was off screen. Um, but you know, this is the color used for buttons. So I could come in here and click that drop down. Like, you know, I, I didn't really like orange. Um, I wanna I wanna use this this uh, teal color. Click OK and save it. And now that's been updated in my web theme. I do not have to go dig around in the code to figure out where that was or try to figure out that, you know, the color I really wanted to use was 2AA198. You know, I I don't know that off the top of my head. Uh, but, you know, this, this is a really easy way to, like, edit this stuff. Um, in addition to that, uh, if you have a component, so let's make a new UX component. And we'll tell this one it's using blank theme. And we'll let's add a control here. Let's add a button. I'm gonna click me. And I'm gonna click preview available sub themes because I don't have pri primary here. And I don't know why it isn't 
Uh, it didn't show it because I didn't save this. Let's save that. All right. Go back here and edit this again. Base. We'll say this is a, a blank UX demo. <laughs> All right. And so we go into live preview. We can just verify that that's working. Yes, start the live preview. There's our button. Notice when I move the mouse over it, nothing happens because we didn't define any kind of hover effect on this yet. But the thing I wanted to point out here is that this property, customized style colors and fonts, can now be used to change those colors. And these changes will be saved as a style tweak. So it will not, it will not change um, your sub your web theme. Uh, these changes will be stored separately independently of that. So you know, you could create your web theme, put it together, you're using it in another app. And then you decide, you know, I I really want it, one of these to be a different color, kind of distinguish between the two, but I want to keep everything else the same. This property, customized style of colors and fonts, gives you that option. And if you wanted to take it like a third step, you know, you've you've put together all these changes in the customized style of colors and fonts, uh, and you just want to make that something that can be generally available, you could take all those settings that you you've created and turn that into an inherited theme that inherits, inherits from the theme that you built. So, and I'm, I know I'm throwing a lot of, of terms at you guys I didn't, I didn't cover, uh, but I, I do want to point that out. Um, this is the link I sent at the beginning of the webinar, the, the web theme builder uh, doc page, and this is the list of parts that you can go look at. Uh, but with regards to where our style stored the the style that we created is stored in the CSS folder in our project because it is a local style uh, if it's a inherited style or a style tweak that gets stored in a slightly different location a style tweak show up in something called the tweaks folder and then an inherited style will have a folder name similar to the one that you created but it will have a rule within it that says I am referencing this other theme and it will pull all that uh, CSS and SAS and image information from uh, its base theme before applying any of its local overrides. And just to give you an idea of inherited styles, um, the alpha theme is our like core theme, and then we have a whole bunch of variants on it. And all they all they do is like they change things like the font and the color. Uh, but because they're saved as an inherited style, I can just pick this from the style picker uh, when I'm specifying my UX or my grid. We come back over here on the style name. I don't know why I didn't think to do this here. So I can just pick from one of these and now I've got all those changes. So I didn't have to go back into like customize style colors and fonts on another project uh, to get all those settings. Now, do remember if you, if you've joined us at past webinar or you've, you have any familiar with this, you should know that customized style colors and fonts applies to the entire project. So while it doesn't change your core theme implementation, it will affect every single component in your project that uses that theme. So just bear that in mind uh, when you're making those changes. If you want something that overwrites the the theme locally without affecting anything else, you will want to look at doing something like a class name applied to the theme or to the component that implements all the settings that you want to override. And with the uh, SAS lets you do something called nesting. Um, where, you, where you could do something like, um, uh, let's look at brown and then button. Uh, I think brown is a CSS color. I'm not entirely sure, though we could uh, avoid the guesswork here and right click and say insert color and come over to Fandex and just pick something from here. That looks like a shade of brown to me. 
insert that a semicolon. So now I've, I've this is CS, uh, this is SAS syntax. This is not legal CSS. It is legal SAS. Uh, what this is basically doing is it's I've defined a class named Brown, and if it has um, the the stuff within it's going to be combined together to create one rule that's like dot brown dot button, um, and then anything that's within that Brown uh, class and also has these other rules that match will receive uh, will will use those rules. Uh, and uh, this is a way you can go about overriding the theme to do something locally. I, I've seen people ask a few times, you know, how do I have two UX components using like alpha blue and alpha red on the same page? Um, you know, can I do this? The answer is no, because they use all the same class names uh, for the controls. And the way CSS works is whatever theme gets loaded last, all the rules in it are the ones that get used. Because they're not isolated, uh, you know, alpha blue has everything colored to be blue, alpha red has everything colored red. So when alpha blue loads in, everything will be blue. And then when alpha red loads in, everything will be red across the board because nothing is wrapped uh, within a, like a top level container to contain those rules. But if you do something like this, uh, you can then add that wrapper, well, wrapper class is the term used here. Here's the wrapper class uh, box. Uh, but you could use that to, make some changes that would apply to a very broad area on the component because the UX component does have a top level um, uh, wrapper container. Let's see if I can find it. Speckless search. Uh, container. I don't remember. The, C uh, the UX component either you can wrap it manually. It does have a setting at the top. It's escaping me at, at, at this time about what you could use, but you can apply that class name to the whole UX itself and then everything will capture the settings you want. Um, I did promise to show you what this is. Wrapper class is a way to preview things. So if we go here into brown, click OK. This is now displaying the preview of button with the brown class name applied to the container outside of it. So see how these these buttons are now brown? I could come in here and do something like um, color white. And now the font is white. Uh, if I remove this and click OK, it's going to go back to what it looks like by default. This will remember all the values you've put in it, um, which is handy. Uh, but this is also really, really helpful if you're doing something like you're putting together a, let's escape out of here, none. If you're, you know, working on a, a panel card implementation for like the header and the body and you want controls placed in there to look different than how they look in the actual body, you can take that class name that you've created for the panel. Um, for lack of a better word, we'll call it uh, brown, right? So brown is the class that's going all the headers are going to have. So then if there's a button placed inside of that panel header, it's going to use these rules and not these rules up here. So there's a lot more I can talk about, which is why it is being broken up into multiple sessions. But I do want to spend the last seven minutes maybe answering a question <laughs> if we can find the answer. Um, actually, there are not a lot of questions today. I think um, Interesting. You, you've gotten a, you are completely stumped people or they're, they're I guess, still processing. I have been crystal clear. No one is confused and everyone has learned something. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, this building a custom web theme arguably is probably the most complicated thing you can do with Alpha Anywhere. There's a lot of it involved and there's parts of this that we didn't even get to today. Uh, I didn't talk about um, uh, path, you know, CSS placeholder names, stuff like that. Um, but yeah, uh, next session, which is in two, two weeks, two weeks, yeah, we will implement something. Um, we'll, we'll get to see it all in action, huh? Excellent. Well, some of it, yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm gonna try to keep it small, I, I, you know, cause yeah. it, there's a, 
so much you can do in here. If you haven't looked at UX, you know, UX has a few things. Um, a, a list, list has a whole bunch of settings in here, like, you know, page navigation, items, the resize handle, uh, which this is what it looks like if you don't style any of those things. So starting from scratch and a lot of this stuff can be very, very daunting. Well, most, so apps have a, most apps have a list control and you'll probably want to style those. Well, I think what you pointed out before that don't style stuff that your app isn't using is probably good no. advice in terms of Yeah, yeah you know, if, yeah. again, if, you, if you're never going to use a tabbed UI, you're never going to use a grid. Look at all the stuff you can do with a grid. Like, right. don't don't bother exactly <laughs> so it may, it may it. seem yeah. daunting but you may not have to do nearly as much as what appears there so right yeah, yeah. and and this is going to show you like so grid's always going to be in here because i clicked on it but mm -hmm. um you know the stuff that i've implemented that i care about i'm going to see that and we can talk yeah. a little bit next week about oh i added this i don't want it how do i get rid of it and i'll show yep. you the the way to get rid of it <laughs> very cool Awesome. Hey, Sarah, thanks a lot. And I'd also like to thank everyone who showed up today. Remind, remember, you can still ask questions by sending them in to guides, G-U-I-D-E-S at alphasoftware.com. Until then, we hope to see you at our next Alpha Demo and Q&A webcast. So take care. Stay well. Bye-bye.